Section 5 will briefly introduce how to use Optilizer Viewer for the analysis of media LB data using basic filtering. Once the media LB data has been captured and stored in a file, we want to watch and analyse it. At first, simply double click on one of your trace files. When asked, load any existing settings for the viewer. So, what do we get? The viewer shows one line per event, in our case one physical media LB channel called a media LB raw event. Remember when we did this setting, it was right at the beginning when we connected the media LB monitor to the optilizer suite and configured the tool. Let's have a closer look at these Media LB raw events. First of all, you can double click on the top left cell of the grid to optimize the column width for all events, or just double click on a single column header. Each event starts with a timestamp, having time, milli and microseconds, followed by this small icon here in the second column, showing that the analyzer has been synchronized to the media LB clock during capturing, which is called lock state. The next column indicates a media LB speed of 512 times the frame sequence in our example, and it means that one media LB frame transports exactly 512 bits. The fourth column represents the number of the physical channel of this event, and as you can see in our example, the Media LB frame provides 16 time multiplexed physical channels starting with 0, 1, 2, 3, going up to 15. For higher Media LB speed grades, we could see many more physical channels. The line which contains physical channel 0 also has channel address 01FE and the data is the so-called system channel which is not available for user payload. Physical channel 0 is shown in grey marking the start of a new media LB frame. The fifth column just shows the number of the recorded media LB frames and you can see that the 16 physical channels here all belong to the same media LB frame. The next media LB frame starts with the grey line again, having an incremented frame count. The following three columns show a command byte, a response byte and the two byte channel address which are transported on the media LB signal line. Whereas the green column labelled data contains the data quadlet, four bytes of data transferred on the media LB data line. The last column indicates high layer protocol states such as success, called lock, busy or others. If you want to navigate through the trace, you can either use the scroll bar or the arrow buttons. With the arrow buttons, you can go to the last event or jump to the first one or you can move in steps. Let me go in steps of five. You might wonder how many events this file contains, so we just go to the last event. It is selected and let's have a look at the coordinates you see it is 2,016,720 events. You might have noticed that the majority of the 2 million events in our example trace have no data but just zeros. And if you look at the channel addresses, we'll only find two of them, two and four, besides the channel address 01FE, which is associated with this system quadlet. This means that only two of the 16 physical channels are actually in use. The rest is currently unused. 
How can we cut down these enormous number of events to get an overview of what has happened in the trace? And how can we find something interesting and meaningful? Let us use some of the powerful predefined filters which are part of the Media LB workspace by clicking on the Filter tab to expand it. When going down the list, you will find a filter condition for events that have a channel address equal to 4, respectively to 2. After checking these two filter conditions, we may have to wait for a short while and then the grid will show us just the remaining events. That is only two of the 16 physical channels, resulting in around, let's go to the last one, resulting in around 250,000 events only. Channel addresses 2 and 4 are used for the communication between iNIC and the application processor. If you want to check quickly if any other channel addresses are in use, adjust the filters. Let's check for channel address 6. There is no event on the display, which means that the channel address 6 is unused in this trace. Let us check again for something else, for example, for a channel address A. And we have to wait for the filtering. Let's jump to the last event, and we see there are around 14,000 events remaining on the display, meaning that the channel address A is used to transport data on Media LB. A good way of getting a quick overview is to filter for Media LB transmission events. This event type concentrates all raw events which belong to the same message. However, you need to activate this software feature before capturing data in the way we did earlier, during the configuration of Optilizer Suite. First, uncheck all of the existing filters, wait for processing, and then check the Transmission All filter, which is down in the list. And we wait again for processing. Now we adjust the columns, and we have filtered just 64 events. Jump to the last and look at the coordinates, but these 64 events are spread across 2 million lines. Now, when you scroll to the Disassemblies column, you can see a typical startup communication between an iNIC and an application processor. Those are the individual control messages. In case you want to save just these filtered events, click on the floppy icon, specify a folder and a file name, and save. Please note, it is not possible to override an existing file. As a last step, I will filter for both transmission events and for events which have a command byte of 30, 32, 34 or 36. The latter condition will filter all Media LB raw events which are part of a control message. As an example, if we look at this area here in the middle, you can see four raw events, all coming from channel address 2 and having commands 30, 32, 34 according to our filter. Looking at the data column of the following event, you can see that the individual data quadlets of the raw events are all concatenated to make up one complete message. When you scroll to the disassembly column of this event, you can actually see what happens. The iNIC is reporting its node address value to the application. In a similar way, you can combine up filters from the list. It's a logical or. Additionally, you can even create your own advanced filter condition.
In the following section, I will show you how to find and analyse messages in a convenient way. First, click on the Dump tab, which is down here on the left. And within here on the Syntax tab. This window will show details of the currently selected message. Just as an example, let's use the full text search to find a specific message, the one which sets the iNIC into attached mode. So let's start the search function. And we type in a keyword. Let me choose attach because I'm searching for the attached mode. And let's go to the next. And here we are. You see here the iNIC has received a message. EHCI state is called with a set operation type and put into the attached mode. You can also search for the next occurrence or for the previous one. Now, after we have found a specific message, we can set a bookmark on it. So, you just right-click on the message, toggle bookmark, and select the next one. Here, the little green icon is the bookmark icon. The advantage of bookmarks can be easily demonstrated by removing all filters in our trace. Let me do that. Now we want to find our special message again within 2 million events. Just right click on the display, go to bookmark and select the desired one. And here we are with again the EHCI state attached message. If you want to save your bookmarks, you simply have to save the trace using a new file name, as we did before. So here is the file, and we rename it and we save it. So now we have used Optimizer Suite to display a trace. We used some predefined filters and the search function for basic analysis.